happy to be here. Sorry, it's the last night of this. No, it isn't the last night. We got Sunday yet, haven't we? That's right, Sunday afternoon and Sunday night. That's very fine. So I'm happy that we had that. They call Yes, sir, and tomorrow night also. <laughs> Friday night, Saturday night, we get rest. And Sunday night, Sunday afternoon, Sunday night. We make the announcement that we'll see you on the next day. I can know I have 
she walked out last night, sister. She walked out there and just got a hold of God. And all of a sudden, I feel something come on me and pull me around. She was standing way far in the distance of this building. I said, all right, sister, God has healed you. Go for all that. Both eyes come straight. The girl was here in the building somewhere. I wish she'd just come forward. If you're hearing my voice, sister. Uh, here she is right here. Let us say praise the Lord, everybody. Yeah.
we hid it for our faith from him. He was despised, and we have seen him not. Surely he has borne our grief, carried our sorrows. Yet we did see him in the midst of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chaps of our peace is upon him, and with his stripes we are people. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Now we pray. Our Heavenly Father, just reading the word now, may the Holy Spirit take the word now and go right into the hearts of the people. And may they come to a full realization this night here under the tent that it's Jesus that we speak of. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastity of our peace was upon him, and with his sight we are evil. Oh, how we love him with all of our hearts. With gratefulness we come to bow our heads to the dust of the earth, which we were taken and someday shall return in the largest heaven. And I ask you, Father, to bless us tonight and will move upon us a great, marvelous way and the many great healings be done tonight because of the prayer. May those dear people here reach right out and take a hold for us. Grant it, Lord. And bear a hold to the rock of ages until the power of the Lord sweep them through the gate out into the freedom, out of the clutches of the enemy, until they're free from sin and sickness. Grant it, Father, you hear the prayer of your servant as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight, we won't take much time to say any words, only I want to thank all who had a part in I want to thank the cooperating ministers. God bless them. These strangers here ought to attend their church. Give them a visit, Paul. And I'm sure that they're a good, God saved man. Thank you, God. Never have had a place that ministers to any more than harm and love in the truth of them. And the audience. I've never had to call one person down on the way to be prayed about. How marvelous. You could be sometimes God has to step in and flick the heck of the report to make him come to the defense. Now that's it. This year, the people just reverence and believe with one of heart and one of heart. That's the way to do it. And now that's wonderful. And all of our expenses have been met. We're just thankful to you. Gave me a love offering. I appreciate the depth of my heart. Do anything. Though so someone wrote me a little letter a while ago, and my, they just tear me up about Sunday afternoon meeting. Oh, my. <laughs> Some lady. She said, I come to see miracles, not to hear about what something happened in somebody's life. That attitude, sister, you'll never see until one's been performed on you, and that's when you get converted. That's right. That's right. Because your heart's not right with God. Something like that. The attitude towards the fruit. The, the fruit, the taste of the pudding is a fruit there. Uh-huh. So, notice, by their fruit you shall know. Now, and now we've had a glorious success for Jesus Christ. Do you know Jesus has done more here than he could do in his own city, has he? Or there was no mighty works Jesus could do in his own city. And in this city, he's done mighty works, hasn't he? So he's had more success in this city than he did in his own city. Think of that. Jesus Christ, after 1,900 years, has had more success in Cleveland, Ohio, and six weeks meeting here, or three weeks meeting, than he did in his Christ journey in his own city. Think of that. Goes to show that the glorious old gospel still has the same power it had in the beginning. That's right. Poor men and women will believe on him. Now we're thankful for that. And pray that 
God will bless all of you, and I hope to see you Sunday afternoon. And Sunday afternoon is preaching service. If the Lord doesn't change my mind, I want to preach on the subject of the return of the prodigal son on Sunday afternoon. And come out at the arena. And then, uh, then we, then Sunday night, I trust that we'll have the greatest meeting service we've ever had. Just trust that the place will just be illuminated with the power of God. Maybe I'll be a little rested after a two nights of rest now on Friday and Saturday night and be more able to go into the service. This way I'll become dense, dull, and I, and I, and I want to get tired and worn. The senses of this gift become more or less dull. I think a fellow on anything in natural work, as you go so long, you become kind of dull, sense down to it. And that's the way this is. I trust the goggles that the great strength starts again Sunday night. Come out believing. Come out praying. Thank all the ushers and the officers and everything that cooperates. Don't give me a picture of that. Not two minutes over time. Not it's in a park and I both leave there at 4 o'clock. I was out running around here and there. And the Lord called me on two missions today to go out. Two people were healed on the street today. I was sitting in the room. Lord came down and said, go down to this corner and turn to the left and go down here and stand there. There'll be a woman come along with a gray suit on, a little white hat, that she has cancer to be healed. And there she was, coming down the street and said, aren't you Reverend Brown? So that then I said, yes. She said, oh, I've tried to come, but my husband won't let me come. I said, the Lord has healed you. There's cancer, sister. Pass on in peace. And, oh, my. She went down the street weeping like that. See, God knows all about those things. And... Oh, it's marvelous. I believe I've seen a, a backslider brother come to the Lord this afternoon, too. Come back to the house of the Lord. To the fellowship of his dear son. Now, pretty much. And I was just looking at this sweet little girl sitting here. Bless her little heart. This is sweet. I love you. It's a lot of stuff, too. The little girl just sitting here with a little blonde hair. I remember one of the most pathetic sights I ever seen in my life was in Mexico, where we were going to try to make a little trip this winter possible. I remember we went across the border at Juarez, the first time I was ever in Mexico. And my brother Moore and I, we crossed the border and went in there. I walked down the street, and oh my, people on the street, TV and everything, I'd reach down and try to give them money to take over and hand find how there's two birds would be hitting. I tried to tell them I couldn't understand their language that they couldn't understand mine. They pulled back. They were afraid. Like, I went on down the street and went around by some church. Oh, it's very poor. We seen a little fellow there stacking up old rotten tomatoes on a little view and started down the street. I tell you, it would make you feel like you were no good. I noticed another side. There was a little fellow there. He didn't have on no clothes, but just a tote. He had a little bill, a sack, and it was all full of paper all tore up. He was reaching down in an old garbage can. He was pulling out something, you know, and he shake the water off and rake the things off his hand and look at it. They were all of them partly blind. Look at it like that, and he lay it in a little bitty old bucket of a thing. His grandmother standing there barefooted, her feet like a bear on the bottom, just as callous as it could be. Here's an old dirty shawl on the center. She's just holding her hands and he's reached down the field again. I said, I'm going over and looking at it. They said, oh, you ought to go there today. I went over there. What it was, this little Mexican boy was getting little bitty bit pages about like that out of the bottom of the slop. And when Mexico throws anything away, it's really bad. But he had about a half a dozen. And they're just laughing and they were laughing. They were looking at their potatoes. I thought, my... And I just left over there, and my brother had paid about at least 75 cents or a dollar for my bread. We crossed the border. I looked at the poor little fellow. Uh, it looked like your heart would just swell out of you. Now, he might be a little Mexican, but he gets just as hungry as a little American. When he's hungry, he's just as hungry. Yes, and Jesus died for him just as soon as if he died for all of us. I looked at him, I thought, poor little thing. What if that's my little Billy Paul? Look at him. And I walked up to where he was. The grandmother seen me coming up. I perhaps it was grandmother. She run back. And I touched the little fellow like that. And my, jumped out into the street. Thought somebody was kicking or something. 
for taking those procedures. He looked at the lives of tight tears in him and shaking like that, and, right, looking at me. Ah, God. Tell the old fellow, no, I was walking up towards heaven, holding my hand over my heart. If I let him know that I was a minister, I kept walking up like that and kept me all around to see what was going on up there. And I, I knelt down, I know he was Catholic, so all of them there is Catholic. I've been making crosses, you know, my heart and hold up my hand. All of them to you, young man, you gave me a love offering. You begin to walk up a little bit. I walked up. I reached down my pocket. I had about, oh, five or six dollars and halves and quarters and things I had in my pocket. I had him hold his little hands down. I told him to hold his hands like this. He looked at me. You know what? I finally got him to hold his little hands. I dumped all that in his little hands. And he looked at it like this. He got down and looked at it closed. He stood there a little bit. Put it down in his little pocket. And looked up to me like that. Took off his little cap and knelt down on his knees. He took a whole thing. Oh, my. God bless you, honey. I'll visit you again, honey. That's right. We have a lot of things we can do with money if we do. <laughs> Americans are just do it. Do you know that? That's right. There's what's really need. It's worth suffering in the need. Poor little fellow. The garden now, the Lord willing, around Christmas, we'll take a trip down to there to see those little fellows. God is merciful to us, isn't he? We American people don't know how well off we are. That's right. To know that the need of this world, how they're in need. And yet we have plenty in heaven. Don't feeling, he said, I was hungry, you didn't feed me. I was naked, you didn't call me. I was in prison, you wouldn't visit me. When were you, Lord? Insomuch as you have done unto me, for these, my little ones, you have done it unto me. All right, now we're going to start the prayer line. Hold on. I want to pray just as much as possible tonight for the state. Starting about 35 minutes early tonight. Or I want to pray just as long as I can. I want to go. I forgot to get to bed real early in order to drive in the morning, get back home for our services tomorrow night. So let us bow our heads again, if you will. Friends, you may laugh too much. You may talk too much. You may walk too much, but you'll never pray too much. I would that man pray ever were lifting up holy hands. But I, our Heavenly Father, we've come now to the end of 17 nights of service, one of the longest services you've ever permitted your servant to have. Now, tomorrow night is another one here with Brother Lindsay and Brother Hall. Father, we pray that you'll meet with them here. Bless those two dear Christian brothers. May the power of the Holy Spirit be here to deliver the sick and the afflicted, those who may not be here tonight. We ask you tonight to... Clear the whole building, Father, of every sick person. May there be a great pouring out of the Spirit. Many hundred, all that's in need tonight, may they be delivered here at the platform tonight, Lord, and out in the audience in their seat. As our little sister testified, standing plumb back, way in the back of the building, God come down upon her with those eyes being crossed and this baby. Move those eyes out straight, the power of the Holy Spirit taken away. God, without wavering faith, she moved forward in her young heart, blessed. Going everywhere now, come all the way up here just to get to say, Jesus heals. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thank of the little girl there, cross-eyed, blind, stomach trouble, was healed, and you permitted her to go in the great book of who's who. Oh, God, we thank Thee for Thy mercies and kindness. Be with us tonight now, won't You, Father? Pour out Your Spirit upon us and give us a great deliverance tonight. For we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, everybody, tonight I wish we would just try to settle down to this one thing, that God is here. I wonder if you'll make me this promise before we start praying for the sick. If you make me this promise and say, if God touches me in the least tonight, I'm going to rise and claim my healing. 
And the first time that faith anchors in my heart, Lord, here I come. You remember the lepers sat at the gate? They said, why do we sit here till we die? Let's do something about it. And now you do the same tonight. Let's do something about it. His presence is your little death baby was sitting there last night, and that mother, oh, how she was looking, how she was trying. I could feel it so full. Then just got everybody in there began to pull him, and I know several of them stopped. I turned around, I said, somebody in there, there's several of them healed. I can't tell just who they were. The mother turned around and spoke to the baby and brought the card up with tears rolling down her cheeks and said, my baby's here. And he, See? That's it. That's it. Just go believing with all your heart. It'll be so. It's your faith that makes you whole. Isn't that right? Your faith. No other way can you be healed. Only through faith. Now, God bless you. Are here awaiting. All right. Now, we won't try to get as many as we possibly can. I'm going to you. can make the call to yourself. I put it on his hands for tonight. Pray that God will help him to make the choice. All right. Now, how many cards you got? A hundred out? I believe maybe after we get the line to going a little while, maybe we won't have to linger so long with one. And just let them come right on through and the whole group be healed. Wouldn't that be marvelous? To see? We used to have... The, how many was ever one of the fast lines? What when we used to have fast lines? We pass them through there, and testimonies are just pouring. The only thing they want to do is just get near them. Just to get there when the anointing was on. Then they called their blessing and went away rejoicing. And they were healed. See? The brass serpent couldn't pray for no one, could it? The pool of Bethesda, the angel didn't pray for no one. Is a troubled water. Is that right? They just looked and lived for the brass serpent. And in the days of the apostles, they laid in the shadow of Peter and Matthew. Now, if you don't believe that this is Bible times again, just to repeat, this last day, God calling out a people of the Gentiles. He's calling them the Jews and a Gentile church. The same thing, a contract. In the old days, when a contract was made, you know what they did? Notice, God just telling me to say this, I don't know. A person would go and write a, a contract on a piece of paper. They'd write the contract, and then on the contract, they'd write what it was, it was going to do, and then they'd tear the paper in two, and they would kill a beast. The, uh, and over this beast, they tore the contract. They would give one person one part, one part person the other. And when they come together, and this agreement was brought together, that had to be exactly the same piece of paper cut through the letters and had the dovetail just exactly with that or the contract was no good. See, the agreement was no good. The same piece of paper that was tore away had to come right back and dovetail in with the other like that to make it perfect. And then, as their pledge, they killed the beast. When they made their pledge, now God made a contract with the peoples of this world. Therefore, he sent the Son of God and killed him on Calvary. You believe that? All we like sheep have gone astray. God laid upon him the iniquity of all. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastity of our peace upon him. With his stripes were healed. That was God's contract to the church. Is that right? Then God killed the lamb, the Calvary. You believe it? And from him, he tore him apart. He took part of it, the body, up into glory. Set it on the right hand of the majesty. You believe it? And the Holy Spirit he sent back to the people. Is that right? Then when he comes together, when this contract has come together at the day of the judgment, the same Holy Spirit that fell on the day of Pentecost is grouping around a bunch of people. It'll go right back to that same body. The dove tail right into that same body. It's a contract. So therefore, the same spirit that was in that day is here today. The same signs, wonders, miracles are being performed. The same people are believing in the same manner. When they see the apostle Peter and recognize him to have the gift of God in him, when he called out, and told the people what they did. And they recognized. They told Ananias and Sophia their sins. 
He knew what God put in his heart to do. And then, in that, after them recognizing that, the prayer line got the great so Peter could pray for them, and they laid the people in the street that even that old fisherman, not some big D.D., but an old fisherman, that his shadow would pass over them, and every one that his shadow passed over was healed. There you are. There's no scripture for that. There wasn't any then, but God healed them because they respected the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he'll do the same thing today. It wasn't Peter. It was they respected God who he represented. Is that right? That's who it was. And his shadow passed over them. And they were healed because they believed it. We're back in the same days again. God moving among his people, great signs and wonders. Now you don't have to lay the shadow, but you're under this tent tonight. Around it where the Holy Spirit is here to let it pass over you. Then rise up and say, yes, I believe it right now. I accept it. Be evil. Amen. You believe that, sister? You do? That tumor's been bothering you a lot, hasn't it? Yeah. Hasn't that tumor been bothering you? All right, it's dead now, sister. God healed you because you believe. Have faith in God. Amen. Oh, my. How marvelous. He, sh- he sure can heal all things. Just have faith. God will grant it to you. My, how that's coming in now. Oh, people. Wish you could just only... If... Look, i tell you what. If you've been just a little afraid, take my word tonight, will you? Take my word and actually do what I tell you. And I'll be responsible for you after the end of the judgment. That's right. If you will believe on Jesus Christ with all your heart and believe that he healed you now and accept him that way, that's all you have to do. Go forth testifying, telling your healing. Go right on and God will send you delivered. That's true. Praise the Lord. I've been looking back in the crowd and just seeing we're coming way back from farther back than I could ever come from. That's exactly right. Somebody right in this channel right here with me with a cancer just a few moments ago. I'm not sure. I think the lady has a white hat on right there. Right over there. I'm sure it's right along in that section. Lady, if you have cancer sitting right there, the woman's got her hand up. Was that a cancer case? Did you have cancer? All right. It's gone from you, sister dear. It's left. God bless you. Amen. All right. Let's say praise the Lord. My. Another cancer case right here. Want to accept it with hay fever, too. God bless you. Is that right? Stand up. I see you all. There you are. You're free from it. You, sister, with a cancer case. Stand up. Jesus Christ heals you. Why, my, you can stand up on the building and be healed if you just believe it right now. He's here with mighty power. Oh, Jesus, son of God, author of life, giver of every good gift, send our blessings upon the people. Make signs and wonders be wrought tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus, grant it, Father. Hallelujah. My. Look, I wonder how many of you believe this right now. If we get right down here and just let the people pass through it, put our hands on them to bless them, that they be healed. How many believe that? Raise your hand. Has it been confirmed to you? Do you believe, I told you the last night I'd ask you this, if these things didn't happen the way that I said the first night, call me a false prophet. How many were sure the first night you heard me say that? Raise your hand. I said if they did happen, then believe God. Is that right? Well, do they happen? Is it the truth? All right. Now look, Jesus Christ said this, these signs shall follow them that believe. Follow who? Them that believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, not pray for them. <laughs> if they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Is that the last words he said? The last promise he gave the church before he ascended into heaven. Is that right? He said, if you find believers and they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Now, I want to ask you, have you faith enough tonight, if we just, I get right down here in this aisle, that 
standing right down here. Just stand there and pray, and everybody come by, lay hands upon that person, and let them, and if you've got faith to say you, go ahead and be healed, go out of here rejoicing and praising God, I'll do it. If, God, if somebody has to hold me up to do it. If you want me to do that, I'm, I'm here to serve you in any capacity if you want to. We, how many would rather have that? You would just go ahead with the regular line and raise your hand. All over the building, I want to see you. All right, look now. Contrary now, we'd rather go ahead with the regular line and call out somebody. Just uh, put your hand. All right, we're going to line up and pray for all the people then. Amen. Just a moment. Just, I, I asked him something else. <laughs> oh, my. You believe with all your heart now? Now, look. The Scripture said, These signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Is that right? Where's my minister, brother, that tonight? Come here. You're going to see the glory of God tonight. No, sir, I want you to come right down here. I want to get right down there with the people myself. For all these people, some of them sitting here, some of these poor people haven't even got a prayer card. Now, everyone, just be, just be reverent just a moment. Stand there, I'm going to come right down with you. Just make a double line of, the, of just the ministers now. Not, not the rest of them, just the ministers. We're going to have to make a line so they come around this way. Just in a moment, my brother will start calling the numbers, get all the prayer cards first, and then we'll start from the prayer cards and get the rest of them that haven't got prayer cards. Are you now, every person, just be reverent, everyone stand just, just as reverent as you can. Now let's see how many prayer cards we got in the building. Let's see your hands. It's probably a good 100 to 150 prayer cards. Now, first we're going to have the prayer cards to file a number, and we'll have a place for them to stop just in a moment. Then I will... Howard or somebody to stand here, or I'll say maybe some minister to stand here at this platform, and as soon as the prayer cards are through, then you keep having a whole group to line up and come through and be prayed for. Coming through, each one to be prayed for and have hands. Now, you must know now, are you sure that you believe? Are you sure? Are you convinced that the Spirit that's moving here in the church is the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you convinced? Do you believe in the divine gift that God has given? Do you believe it comes from God? You do. Then if I have told you the truth for 17 straight nights, then I'm telling you the truth now, am I? I'll say this. If each person in here now will make a committal right now to God, make your committal to God, and the only thing you'd have to have to fulfill the word. Now the Bible says, These signs shall follow them that believe. Is that right? If they, now that's the last word that Jesus gives the church. If they lay their hands on the sick, what will happen? They shall recover. Now, if symptoms should arise, what would you say? It is written... Is that right? Are you ready with your faith to say, I am now ready to commit myself to God in this manner? If you do, raise your hand. Now, he, you are now committing yourself to him. To go through the order, just like water baptism. Just like any other order of the church, the Lord's Supper. This is a sacred order of the church. That these signs shall follow them that believe if they lay their hands on the sick. They shall recover. Now, that wasn't me that said that. That was Jesus Christ that said that. Now, the first thing you must do is surrender yourself entirely to Christ. And surrender your mind to His Word. Lord, I won't act upon my own feelings, upon my own thoughts. I will only act upon Your Word. I'll have no control of my own thoughts concerning it. I will act upon Your Word. Now get that straight. Now you're not going to go down and say, well, I've lost my healing. If you do, brother, it'll be worse than ever if you make this commitment. You're to stand right now, remember, just like coming into the church. You are supposed to make this commitment and say, Lord God of heaven, I'll stand by your word. So help me. Come away. Drop of blood. Let my body your breath. See? You believe when your baby passes through the line, it's going to be healed, sister? You do that? Frankly, it's already healed, but I want you to pass through the line anyhow. It's healed a while ago. All right. But just I want you to come through. So you follow the record. Now, all of you that wants to make this committal, put your hand on your heart like this. 
Those who are standing near, those who cannot, lay your hands on me. Now raise up your hands. Now you now commit yourself to God that from this time hence you believe that you are healed by the power of Almighty God. Do you do that? Almighty God, I now commit this to you as your humble servant in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God who suffered, bled, and died under the for the remission of our sins and the healing of our body. Who has believed our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Here it is tonight. They believe the report. The arm of the Lord is revealed. We believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and now rebuke every spirit of the devil that would find these people in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. May it leave them. Lord God, as they pass to this line, and we lay hands upon them, may the same meeting be tonight, that was in the streets of Jerusalem, when the shadow of Peter passed over the people. We Gentiles believe the gift, we believe God, we believe Christ, just as they did then, and we're just as thankful. And Lord God, may your power sweep over this audience, and heal every person in the building. And as they go through this line, may they rise, shouting and praising God for his glory. In the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, we ask it. Amen. All right. Now he's going to line the cards, and I want you to look. Will you still do something else for me? When the first hand touches you, rise your hands and say, Thank you, Jesus. Go right on through the building, praise Him. God says, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Have nothing else but praises of God constantly rolling through your heart all the time. Yes, sir. Now, here I'll turn the service now to Brother While I go down here in the line to start the music. First thing, everyone must be seated. Everyone must be back in their seats. No one will be allowed to stand up. Now, we want to try to get everyone prayed for tonight. Those that are crippled and on cots will not have to come to the land. Reverend Brandon will come to each one of you personally. To the prayer line, the, the prayer line will start from the first row to my right, extreme right in the sixth section. They will come around this way and through the line, one row at a time as the usher takes. Everyone else remains seated until the usher tells your row to rise up, come through the line, and go all the way around the audience, please, so everyone can get through the line. Thank you. If you'll start the first line, please. Then I tell a can of play. And everyone return to your seat then afterwards and praise the Lord. All right. All right. All right. Let us sing that chorus. Only believe. Get us the chorus here.
people were healed. It's the greatest fast line that I ever seen pass through in my life. Now, I could say that at least 80 or 90 percent of the people that passed through the line are healed right now. I, I checked back with their hands. I tried to reach with my hand to feel to catch vibrations and they would be clear as they could be as they passed by. Practically every one that was passed through the line is already healed. God, who is my judge, who I stand before, know that I tell that which is true. I see a blind man, been in a meeting for a long time, walking around here now, look like he's seeing, standing around here in front of us here. Let's say thank the Lord for that. Now, I think what they ought to do is all the brothers, let's line up and everyone put your hands on the people on the wheel tops and let me come down where you're at. All ministers get around and everybody in prayer now for these people. Now you that's on the wheelchairs and in the cots, when the prayer is asked over you, believe with all your heart. God bless you. Look, friends, from the depths of my heart, I love you with Christian warmest of Christian love. Wonderful. Now you can get around. Let all people bow their heads while we pray. 